Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. So I got a question for you. Uh, I know we're in San Diego and I understand that you guys probably don't even know what rain is or snow is, but like I like extreme weather. Like my family has a tub of all our winter stuff in the garage ready to go at a moment's notice. If they say it's snowing at Big Bear, we're trying to get there. You know, if it says, you know, we're going anywhere. So like last year, we were just right off the side of the 8, eight freeway, had a little snowball fight. I guess I threw a snowball too hard at my daughter. I just, I get worked up. But we love the snow. We love, we love extreme weather. Like, I like thunderstorms. I like extreme rain. I like hail. Like, I like those things. I know in California, we get a half inch rain and everybody's posting things like, we'll rebuild. Like, we'll rebuild. We'll get through, we'll get through this. Um, but honestly, I really loved, I loved extreme weather until about three weeks ago. Um, and the reason I'm going to tell you why. So uh, my wife is a open water swimmer, okay? And so there is a swim in Cancun, Mexico, that they swim from Cancun to Isla Mujeres, and it is six miles. Now, my wife says, oh, babe, it's going to be great. You should be my support kayak <laughs> and support and kayak next to me. Now, uh, I can count on both hands the amount of times I've been in the ocean since we got married. Um, I can count on two fingers the amount of times I've been in the ocean past my waist since we've been married. Um, you could say I'm not an ocean person. That's not my thing. That's not my vibe. Like, I'm good. But Glory says, babe, it would, be really, it would, it would really like, make me feel special and appreciated if you would be my support kayak. And so I'm like, I talk to Pastor Yurgs, and Pastor Yurgs is like, yes, go. Talk to Pastor Tom, and he's like, bro, are you sure? <laughs> um, and so I call the people to get scheduled to go on this open water swim. And I'm like, oh, they're like, you got to do this training. And I'm like, well, they probably don't have that training in San Diego. They're like, you got to get CPR certified. They obviously have that in San Diego. You got to get first aid certified. And you got to basically become a lifeguard. Now, I just told you how I feel about water. And so I have to go do this training to become a lifeguard to go on this swim with Lori down in Mexico. And I do all the training and everything. And I'm thinking this trip, I'm already nervous. Like, I'm going to tell y'all, like, there's some stereotypes, like, I'm okay with. And, and that one might be one of them. That's why I don't baptize people out of merge, because the tanks are a little too... I'm like, Pastor Charles, that's all you, brother. But I do all the training, because I'm like, my wife wants me to do it, I'm going. Like, I'm going. Let's go. But there was, like, things I had to do. Like, I had to lose, like, 35 pounds. Seriously. Because the kayak's weight's 275 pounds. Seriously. And I had to carry gear with me, so I had to lose 35 pounds. So, like, you guys see on Instagram, like, all the cool boxing pictures, but that's because I needed to lose weight to go kayak. <laughs> that's real talk. Like, I was extremely out of shape, and so I had to get in shape. But, like, I love to swim next to her. You know, I loved it because she was, she was there. But we get down to Mexico and we are, you know, I'm, it's the morning of the swim. And I'm the only person um, that looks like me in a kayak, obviously. And um, so everybody's kind of looking at me like, and I'm the only one that doesn't speak Spanish. So everybody's looking at me like, he has no idea what we're talking about. We're going to have to save this dude. <laughs> like, and I'm pretty sure I had heard somebody say, may God be with you. And I was like, oh. But it's time to go. Like we were, it's time to go. We're there. And so it looks like this in the morning. Can we show the first picture? Like it looks like this. Like it looks good. Like it's going to be a great day. Okay. And then, you know, Gloria and her friends start to get ready for the swim. Here's a picture of them getting ready for the swim. The team Forbes, I told you guys. So that's my, you know, that's my kayak and my waterproof bag. I was ready. Y'all, I was ready. And then we got a picture of Gloria and her friends, maybe. Yeah, that's Gloria in the water. 
anyway. Um, but so as you can see, once we get out there, it starts to look a little, a little hazy, a little foggy, just a little bit. And then this happens. Play the video, please. Now, if you notice here on Exhibit A, um, <laughs> this is not what your boy signed up for. <laughs> like, I saw pictures, like the water is crystal clear, and everything's amazing. So what happens is, I'll give you guys a backstory to how we got here. We are on shore, and I'm Gloria's support kayak, so I'm like 200 yards offshore. Gloria is supposed to swim to me at the start of the race, because we can't be right next to her. Lori didn't understand the assignment. <laughs> and so the swimmers all take off. There's a thousand swimmers. And all the kayakers go. And I'm sitting in the middle of the ocean by myself. <laughs> now, um, y'all know how I feel about water. And so I start kayaking out into the middle of the ocean. And I'm going to try to find Glory in this, this mess of a thousand people. And about a mile and a half offshore, um, PTSD. Uh, about a mile and a half offshore, I hear in the distance, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. And I look over, and there's Glory. Wow. So we get together, and we start swimming for, she starts swimming, obviously. I'm, hyper, I'm hyperventilating at this point. <laughs> um, and we get together, and then all of a sudden, the Mexican Coast Guard and the Mexican Navy blow every whistle in the world. And all the kayakers are blowing whistles. And the only thing I hear is, Vamos. And it is, we are turning this, we are, this swim is over, we are turning around and heading back because we, know, we, we can no longer see anything and we don't want to lose swimmers. Now, in that moment of all the whistles blowing, people start to freak out, myself included. <laughs> but people start to freak out. And, um, and like we see, you, you can see right here the, the jet skis and the boats, they're going around, they're, they're picking people up out of the water. They're getting people out of the water as fast as they can. And what, what's, what's happened is people have gone to their animalistic instincts, and you have grown men pulling women off boats. You have ladies crying, you have people freaking out, and I'm like, okay, Glory's here. And so I look at Glory, and she's like, go help people. And so I'm like, okay, Glory can swim. And so they, they end up picking up 700 of the swimmers in boats. Glory was not one of them. Glory turned around and swam in the shore. <laughs> and they were towing kayakers in, but I couldn't let my wife see me go out like that, so I had to. <laughs> but I, I got to see how people respond to storms. Like, it's okay. like, I got to see, like, what would actually happen if we were ever in a life or death situation. Like, people, are, people can post all the cool stuff on social media, like, oh, I, I'm a BA, I'm that dude. And then when a storm happens, you see people freak out. So the title of my sermon tonight is The Storm. You know, I, I've been in storms in my life. I've been in situations where I didn't know how I was going to make it through. I didn't know how we were going to pay the mortgage and, and, and have money for groceries. And I didn't know how we were going to stay married. And I didn't know. Like, honestly, I didn't know. You know, um, and in our lives, like, we're all going to have storms. Like, we're going to go through marriage storms. We're going to go through financial storms, health storms. We're going to go through family storms or multiple family storms. We're going to go through things that like would break normal people, would break people who weren't planned in the house, would break people that weren't plugged in. But I, I, know a sto I know my Bible pretty well, and there's a story about the disciples. They're on a boat with Jesus in Mark 4, 38 through 41. It says, Jesus was, in a stern sleeping, was sternly asleep on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are about to drown? He got up and rebuked the wind and the waves and said, quiet, be still. And the wind died down and it was, it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? See, Jesus understood that like he, he was all powerful. Yeah. Jesus understood he had power over the storm. And so there was no actually no reason for him to be upset. There was no reason for him to freak out. But this is a teachable moment. This, this was a teachable moment to show the disciples who he was. This is a teachable moment to show the disciples how to act in a storm. 
How to act when things don't go your way. How to act when you get punched in the mouth. Like, can you be peaceful? Can you be peaceful or are you going to freak out? I mean, I used to freak out on every little storm. Every little thing that happened, oh, woe is me. It's always going to be like this. These things are always going to happen to the Forbes family. Never actually being peaceful about anything. And that's because I didn't understand who the Prince of Peace was. That's because I didn't understand the power we have through him. I didn't understand what we're called to do when life punches us in the face. You know, they're saying the disciples are crying and afraid and worried and concerned. And Jesus is like, yo, wind, die down. Peace, be still. Can you do that in a storm? Or are you the person that panics all the time? Some people panic all the time because they want attention. Some people, oh, he's always having problems. That's because they want the attention of you trying to help them fix it. Instead of reading their Bible and understand that they have the power to pray and fix it. You know, I, I understand that like we, there's like this gospel that, that is sometimes preached where people are like, oh, I'm saved now. Life's going to be amazing. Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten. He was broken. He was abused. And yet we think that we're not going to go through storms. We think that we're like somehow we're better than the Apostle Paul, like that life's not going to, that the devil's not going to, that things aren't going to happen. Things are going to happen. We know that. But it's how we respond that matters. It's how we respond to what happens. You know, uh, Jesus told the disciples, hey, hop in the boat and cast off. Like he knew the storm was coming. Like Jesus is not surprised by the storms you have in your life. Like, he's not surprised that your family member is acting that way. Like, he's not surprised that your finances are that way. He's not surprised that your health's that way. But he gives you an opportunity to actually have enough peace in your situation to know that he is the healer. He is the, he is the person. He is the thing that, that can help you through storms. But we, we, we're super Christian until something happens. Like, we're super Jesus bumper sticker until things get real. I'm going I'm to break it down for him, Mama Quacha. How are you going to respond? Are you going to respond in a manner? Are you going to respond in a manner that, like, your family feels comfortable and cared for and secure? Are you going to respond like you see on TV? Are you going to respond by throwing a fit? Ladies, if something happens and you're with your children, are you going to be somebody, a person that is so, that's peaceful to in front of your children? Because what you're, how your children see you respond to storms is how they're going to respond to storms. And if you call on the name of Jesus during a storm, your kids are going to call on the name of Jesus during a storm. You're teaching what they're going to repeat. Point number two, when storms approach, your vision will be obstructed. So during this swim, we're about a mile and a half offshore and the fog sets in. And I can't see more than 100 feet in front of me in any direction. Before we started the swim, I could see Isla Maharas. I could see the, the task in front of me. I could see the vision God had given us to get to that point. But then a storm sets in, and all of a sudden, I have no vision. I'm there, and I can't see which direction I'm going in. I can't see, I can't, literally, I can't north, south, east, west. I can't see anything. And at times like that, when, you're, when, you, when God's giving you a word, when God's giving you a vision, and then a storm happens, it, it may be easy to feel like, oh, God, you've abandoned me in this. Oh, God, I can no longer see you clearly. 2 Corinthians 5-7 says, for we live by faith, not by sight. Right, right, right. That means when God gives me a vision, he's going to see it to fruition. Yeah. Because my eyes can be deceptive. That's right. My eyes can be deceptive when I'm in a storm and I feel like, I, like God, I, I don't feel you right now. Can you still keep moving forward with faith? God, I, I know you gave me this word, but God, I, you're not arresting my senses right now. I used to be able to feel you next to me. And now, God, you're far off. 
We see in the book of Job when Job's like, God, where are you at? I understand, I understand this. I'm going to be real with y'all. God gave me a vision of Gloria and I as old grave people. And then I got a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. And at that moment, I could no longer see myself living to be old and gray. It was like God had abandoned me in that moment. And God hadn't abandoned me in that moment. It was a wake-up call. Like, Jeff, stop eating little Debbie's. Like, Jeff, why are you eating lunch from a gas station? Bro, what is, like... (laughs) And so I couldn't see that. Mike Maiden came. The prophet Mike Maiden that's going to be at a waking conference. Go. Go. Stood me out in the front row and said, hey, I I break off the spirit of premature death. But I still couldn't see God. But the words lined up, but I'm still, I'm in this storm. I'm in this, I'm in this medical storm where I'm like, my dad died young. Everybody in my family's died young. God, I, I need you to come here. I need to see you and feel you. And I couldn't hear him or see him. But I said, hey, Mike Maiden made the word. Mike Maiden called, said, hey, spirit, spirit of premature death's broken off. And so what I start doing? Dieting. Working out. Boxing. Doing crazy swims in the ocean. What the? Two Mondays ago, I went to the doctor and got tested for diabetes, and they have no clue where it went. And I tell you that, not like God did not, it was not a miraculous healing in one minute. God gave me the word, and and then he disappeared. He didn't disappear. I just stopped pursuing him the way I was because I wanted instant healing. I didn't want to have to go wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go boxing. I didn't want to have to eat green beans. <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't want those things. Like, it was, it was easy being like stopping at 7-Eleven for lunch and grabbing a sandwich and a bag of chips. Don't say ooh like that. I'm a busy dude, Leandra. Oh, Pastor Summer? But I tell you that story because I got the word. I got the vision of my wife and I being old. Yeah. Come on, that's great. But the things I saw in front of me were not that, did not match that vision. When I go to a doctor and they're like, you need to lose 20% of your body weight. I didn't see the healing. I didn't see myself there. I didn't, because I had tried to lose weight before. I had tried to eat clean before. I had tried to do all those things in my own strength and it wasn't happening. And so I just assumed that this was my plight and someday I was going to have to inject insulin. Someday I was going to go on this path. And God said, no, 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 no. The word's been spoken. Walk it out by faith. And you ain't going to see it right now. Point number three. Tell your circumstances and those in your boat to be still. Now, sometimes you don't have to tell your friends to be still. Sometimes there's a sign of trouble and your friends slash acquaintances will disappear. But here's what I'm talking about. We're in a boat. I'm in a storm. Okay. I'm in a, I'm in a medical storm. Okay. I got a 911 out to heaven. Like heaven, I'm not dying young. Like heaven, uh uh-uh. Like I got too much ministry. I got too many lives to impact. I got too much going on. I ain't going out like that. Like, when I'm in that situation, I don't need a Karen telling me, well, according to statistics, I don't need that. Like, I don't need your 411. Like, I understand statistics. I understand science. But see, God created science, and so I'm going to go with him. I, got, I, had, I had family members that I called and said, hey, I know everybody dealt with this. And they told me, like, yo, this is just how our family is. This is what happens. Everybody dies young. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to agree with that. When when you're in a storm, you need to make check the people that are in there. Like when I'm in a boat in a storm, I'm looking around the boat, seeing who's rowing the right way. Like I don't need somebody trying to row us in a circle. I got a call in my life. I'm moving forward. We're moving forward. (laughs) 
I got, and especially right now, a lot of fear mongering going on right now. A lot of, oh, we're going into a recession. Yeah, yeah, great. You're going into a recession. Like, I'm, I'm not, I, just, I don't accept those things anymore. Like, I don't accept that. When I'm writing a vision builder's check, I need somebody next to me like Pastor John Heinrichs that says, bro, kill it. Like, I don't need somebody sitting next to me saying, maybe you should turn down a little bit. What if God turned down when I was diagnosed with diabetes? What if God said, oh, well, I'm just not going to show up now because of what somebody told me? And honestly, people had told me that I was going to, like, people had spoke that over me for a long time ago that I was going to die young. Like, my dad had his first heart attack at 32. One day I'm driving home from work. And I felt an intense pain in my chest. Woo! Here we go. I'm going to talk about it. So one day I'm driving home from work, and uh, I got both girls in the back seat, and I'm, I'm, I get this pain in my chest. I call Glory. She's working. I can't get a hold of her. I call Pastor Leandra, Pastor Tom. I, no one's answering the phone, and I'm, like, driving. Uh, I live in Mount Helix, so I'm, like, driving through Mount Helix. It's real windy, and I'm like, I got this intense pressure in my chest, and I feel like an elephant sitting on me. And it starts playing in my head. It starts playing in my head like your dad had uh, his first heart attack at 32. You're 32. You're having a heart attack. Here, okay, so just, just get home. Just get home. So I get home, and I, I get the girls upstairs. I turn on Lion King. Um, <laughs> You'll understand if you're a parent. Um, so I turn on Lion King and I lay on the bedroom floor. And, I, and, and I'm literally laying there like, this is it. Like, and Pastor Tom picks up, calls me. And I'm laying on the floor and I, I pick up the phone and I just go off on the phone. I go off on the phone like, Pastor Tom, my dad had a heart attack uh, at 32. I'm, this is it. I'm dying. Uh, I'm dying. And, and Tom's like, yo, Stop. Like, just stop. I'm laying on my floor in my bedroom. I'm, not, I'm embarrassed by this. I'm laying on the floor in my bedroom thinking I'm having a heart attack and dying. Because those are the things that have been said about me. And every, I had all the indicators. I was, you know, 40 to 50 pounds overweight. I'm like, this is my moment. Statistics said this is my moment. Everybody on, on the, my dad's side of the family has died young, so this is my moment. I'm in a storm at that time. And I called people that will speak life. I called Pastor Tom. I didn't call. I didn't go on WebMD. Like, yo, what does a heart attack feel like? I called Tom and my, and my family. And I said, hey, I'm in a storm. I, I didn't use the term storm. But I'm in a storm. I just need you to talk to me. And Tom's like, yo, bro, we're going to start praying. And it's amazing how fast I went from I'm having a heart attack to uh, I'm doing Okay. Like, I tell you those things because the people you surround yourself with in a storm, the people who are in your boat can make or break you. The people who you speak life into, make sure they're speaking life into you. Pastor Thomas and I's relationship early on was him just speaking life. Jeff, you're not everything they said about you. Jeff, you're not this. Jeff, you're not that. Jeff, 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 Jeff. And now, now we've grown to the point where I'm spiritually mature enough that we can go back and forth. Like, how you feeling, Pastor Tom? Well, he didn't, he didn't call me Pastor Tom. I'll call him Pastor Jeff. But how, what, how you doing, brother? Like, who's in your boat? Like, who's in your boat at, at, at 1 o'clock in the morning when your kids are sick and you need somebody to come through? Mm-hmm. Who's in your boat when you lose your job? Are those people in your boat saying, hey, don't, don't, dude, don't go work for, look for a job. There's no jobs out there. Just collect unemployment. Wow. Or are those people helping you write a resume? Come on. Yeah. Are those people helping you get to job fairs? Right. Statistics would tell you right now that, like, the world's about to turn down. But the Bible is the only place where two plus two doesn't equal four. That's right. That's right. That's 
Like, I'm not concerned with Wall Street. I'm not concerned with the Dow Jones. Like, I'm not worried about that. Because I know that when I'm in a storm, if I call in the name of Jesus, if I call in the name of Jesus, we're going to get through it. We're going to get to a place where it, it might not look like it was supposed to, but God says, I'm going to make it look like what it needs to look like. The thing that we don't do as Christians, and I'm guilty of it, I have a terrible time like looking back at what God's already done. Like I have a hard time looking back at the times where like the storms that God already helped me ride out. Like I have a hard time remembering that like I used to tell Tom stupid things like, I'm gonna be a statistic, Tom. Because I was so ignorant to what God was doing. Yeah, that's good, man. I was so ignorant to things that God was doing around me. I couldn't, I've never been able to wonder, like I, I actually still struggle with like looking back at how good God's been to me. Like there are things that have happened to me in this life, like I'm not kidding, I should be dead. Yep. That there are storms that I face that should have taken me out. There are things that have been done to me that should have stopped me from growing. I'm at a place now where like when storms happen, because they're going to happen, I can be peaceful in a storm. And the storms used to take me out seem like San Diego rain, half an inch. That's not because like I, I, there's nothing about me that's like special. Anything that God's done for me, he can do for you. He's no respecter of persons. And I know there's people in this room and like, we're coming out of this weird season in the world. And like, it's been heavy for some people. There's been, there's never before in human history been more anxiety, depression, mental illness, prescription drug use and abuse than there has been over the last two and a half years. I love the verse that, where it talks about weeping, but joy is coming in the morning. And I just butchered that verse, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Sorry. Sorry. I had like a revelation around this. A lot of people think like joy comes in the morning and they think about that as like when the sun rises. They think like when the sun comes out tomorrow, I'll be joyful. But 12.01 a.m. is the morning. And guess what? It's still dark at that time. But you can have joy in darkness. You can have joy when you're stepping through a season. You, you can choose to have joy. It says weeping may endure. May. Which means we have the option to not weep. Like what if I told you that last night you cried your last tear about that issue? What if I told you last night you prayed, you, you cried your last tear over that, that child that's away from God? Or you cried that last tear about your broken relationship? It says joy is for sure coming. Weeping is a weeping, it says may, which means we have the power to stop weeping and rejoice. That's right. I've learned that it, it, it may be harder to rejoice in a storm. But I'm telling you that, that rejoicing in a storm brings the biggest breakthrough. I can rejoice when all hell is breaking loose around me. Because it's a choice. I don't have to weep. Weeping may endure. It's time to stop weeping. Joy is happening. It's a definite. It's our choice to make it happen. Because I have the choice right now where I could literally, I could weep all the time. If I wanted to, I could weep about my childhood. I could weep about the mistakes I've made as a father. I could weep about the mistakes I've made as a husband, as a business owner. I could weep about all those things. But I've decided that, yeah, I may have done things, but I may, things may have happened to me, but I'm going to have joy. 
I'm not going to worry about things that are behind me. I'm going to press forward to everything God's called me to do with a joyful heart. So with every head bowed right now, there are people in this room and you're in a season where you feel like you're just weeping. You feel like you're going from loss to loss to loss, to struggle, to struggle, to struggle. And you feel overwhelmed. You feel like there's no breakthrough coming. You feel like no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you do, nothing stops the pain, nothing stops the weeping. And you've cried out to God, God, I just want to be happy. God, I just want to have joy. I just want to have peace. And it's not happening. This is your moment. So right now, if you're in this room, I'm going to actually pray for two people. I'm going to pray for people who have been in a storm. And you feel like no matter what you've done, you haven't been able to get out of the storm. So first, I'm going to pray for those people. If you're in a storm right now, that you feel like you just, the, the, your boat is filling with water and you feel like there's no way out, whether that be debt, whether that be relationship problems, whether that be a loss of a job or a job you don't want, I'm going to first ask you to raise your hand. Hands going up all over the place. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to give it one more second. You can put your hands down after you raise your hand. I'm going to give it one more second because I feel like somebody in here, you're embarrassed to raise your hand. I've been there. I used to come here and sit in the very back of church. No one would see me. But if that's you in here, I see your hand. Thank you so much. Don't be embarrassed. We all go through storms. Paul went through storms. All right, can everybody look up at me? I'm going to do something a little different. Can we all stand to our feet? And all the people that, that raised their hands about being in a storm, I want you to raise your hand. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the people around you pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, and then the people around you are going to pray for you. And what I'm going to ask you to do right now is I'm going to ask you to pray for the people with their hands raised like it's your breakthrough. But this is an intimate moment for your brothers and sisters to have breakthrough. So, Heavenly Father, right now, I thank you for all that you're doing, God. God, I thank you that for sending the Prince of Peace, Lord, to this house. Send the Prince of Peace, God, to break chains of addiction, to break chains of poverty, to break chains of debt. I see debt being canceled right now in Jesus' name. God, I, I declare right now that all these medical uh, uh, um, storms, the medical emergencies, we broke off right now in Jesus' name. I, I declare that incurable is becomes curable right now in Jesus' name. God, I declare that these people would start to see you as the Prince of Peace, that there is no circumstance, no situation that they cannot overcome, that there is nothing in there in them, Lord. Lord, if they would just cast their eyes upon you, God, that you are a chain breaker. You are. You can be peaceful in a storm. You can be, you will be set free. If you believe it, say amen. And with everybody standing up, just real quick before we close service. If you raised your hand and you, you, you want breakthrough from your storms, the first thing you need to do is have a relationship with Jesus. You're like, hey, that sounds great. I'm in this storm, but I really don't know about this Jesus dude. I don't really know about God. Or maybe you maybe you used to have, maybe you used to walk with God, but now you're far from him. If that's you, will you raise your hand? Let me pray for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The first step to cure in a storm is to have a relationship with Jesus and to have a relationship with God. And so I'm going to give you one more second. If you're in here right now and you're far from God and you want the breakthrough I've talked about, just raise your hand for me. Thank you so much. So right now, everyone's in their seats. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to make you come down front and be uncomfortable. So right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you today for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me and wash away my sins. God, I want to re re uh, repent of anything I've said about you, through you, or to you. God, I break every word curse or anything I've spoke over my situation. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Wow. What an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com. 
or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.